All right, welcome back to another PSI National Real Estate Exam Prep. And today we're going to talk about federal fair housing laws. And more specifically, we're going to go over five questions that we think that you're going to see on your national PSI real estate exam and give you the explanations of why the answers are the answers. So question number one, which of the following prospective tenants would be protected from the discrimination under federal fair housing laws? The answer is D, someone suffering from mental illness due to a head injury. An individual experiencing mental health challenges stemming from a head injury is entitled to protection under federal fair housing regulations. However, the Federal Fair Housing Act in its revised form does not extend its protection to individuals who pose a risk to others or their belongings. Additionally, the act does not provide safeguards for those currently engaged in the use of illicit substances such as cocaine. Question number two, people suffering from AIDS and HIV are protected under which of the following classes in the Federal Fair Housing Act of 1968 as amended? The answer is B, handicap and disability. Individuals facing AIDS or HIV related challenges are covered by the handicap and disability category for protection. However, infectious disease does not fall within the scope of protected classes as defined by the Federal Fair Housing Act. The safeguarded classes include race, religion, color, national origin, sex, familiar status, and handicap slash disability. Question number three, a prospective tenant suspected that his application to live in a residential apartment complex was denied on the basis of race. The tenant met with an attorney three years following the alleged discrimination. If the attorney declined the case on legal grounds, it is most likely due to all of the following except. The answer is C. The incident fell under a rare exemption to liability for housing discrimination based on race. Federal fair housing laws unequivocally prohibit any form of housing discrimination based on race without permissible exceptions. However, due to the considerable time lapse since the discriminatory incident based on race took place, Pursuing legal remedies under the alternative options is not feasible. The statute of limitations in this case would prevent the lodging of the complaint. Specifically, complaints must be submitted to a federal court within a two-year time frame and reported to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, within a one-year period. Question number four. John and Nicole Tran, two immigrants from Vietnam, have minor children. The Trans attempted to rent a residential apartment unit in a complex where many of their relatives live. The application was denied on the basis of the minor children. All the following statements about the Federal Fair Housing Act are incorrect except the family status classification provides for a senior housing exemption. The familiar status classification within the Federal Fair Housing Act often protects to families with minor children, but includes an exemption for housing designated for seniors. In order to qualify for the senior housing exemption, housing facilities or communities must adhere to various federal regulations. Senior housing can be categorized into two primary types. In the first type, known as the 55 or older exemption, at least 80% of the units must have an occupant who is 55 years of age or older. The second type of senior housing requires that all occupants within the exemption of individuals like caretakers, 
be 62 years of age or older. The provided information does not indicate any instance where the trans family has faced housing discrimination based on their race or national origin. And question number five, Emily Chan is currently using heroin, but has a heartfelt desire to stop using illegal drugs. Jake Brown, a convicted drug dealer, is a recovering heroin addict who has been clean and sober for 10 years. Both apply for an available apartment unit. Under the Federal Fair Housing Act, Handicap and Disability Classification, the landlord can reject both applications. The landlord has the authority to decline both applications. An individual recovering from alcoholism or drug addiction is afforded protection under the Federal Fair Housing Act's Handicap and Disability category. Nevertheless, it's important to note that the federal fair housing regulations do not exempt protection to individuals who are presently using illicit substances or who have been convicted of distributing, selling illegal substances. All right, this was five questions around the federal fair housing laws to help you pass your national PSI real estate exam. If this was helpful, please throw us a like. And subscribe to the channel. Every week, we drop another video to help you pass your national PSI real estate exam.